Isiaka Sidibe, President of the National Assembly of the Republic of Mali. Honorable members of the National Assembly, Honorable President of the Committees of the National Assembly, Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be in the Republic of Mali, an ancient seat of learning and a nation that was for centuries a melting pot of cultural traditions and influences and home to great scholars, musicians, and historians. I am truly honored to have an opportunity to address this august house of the leaders and representatives of the people of Mali. I am accompanied by the Honorable Minister of State for Finance and Corporate Affairs, Shri Arjun Ram Meghwal, and by three members of our parliament, Mr. Salim, Mr. Kalita, and Mr. Turkey. We bring to you the greetings and best wishes of the people of India. In recent years, we have sought to close the distance that separates us physically. We were happy to welcome His Excellency President Ibrahim Bubakar Keita when he participated in the third India <laughs> when he participated in the third India Africa Forum Summit hosted by India in October last year. We value the contribution of Mali to the success of this summit. Friends, much has been said about the long and illustrious history that connects Africa and India. The African impact on India is found in our genetic makeup, cultural and linguistic traditions, our artifacts, gastronomic choices, and our common worldview. We share a colonial past, and India's independence had a positive impact on anti-colonialism and freedom movements in Africa. The strong sense of political affinity and solidarity between India and Africa dates back several decades to when the people of India and Africa were engaged in an unremitting struggle to gain independence from colonial rule and to become arbiters of their own destinies. The first UN resolution against apartheid in South Africa was sponsored by India. Even though in the early years India had limited resources, it nevertheless considered it its duty to share whatever it had to promote development in the newly independent African countries. My purpose today, honorable members, is not to talk about our glorious past. I come to share with you a vision of the future, a future that is peaceful and prosperous, and where India and Africa stand shoulder to shoulder, claiming their rightful destinies and justice for their people. My visit, the first high-level visit to Mali from India, takes place at a time of excellent bilateral relations between India and Mali. My visit comes at a time when the world is acknowledging the India growth story. This economic growth provides India more resources, not just for its own development, but also more financial leverage in expanding the scope of its engagement with emerging growth poles of the world, like Africa. It comes at a time when Africa, awash with the spirit of democracy, 
has consolidated its control over its resources and accelerated its march towards securing a prosperous future for its people. India's commitment to its partnership with Africa was underlined by Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he depicted it as, and I quote him, a relationship that is beyond strategic considerations. It is a relationship with a strong emotional link. It has been forged by our intersecting history, our centuries-old tie-up ties of kinship, commerce, and culture, our common struggle against colonialism, our quest for equality, dignity, and justice amongst the people, and our shared aspiration for our progress and a voice in the world. We are blessed with vast resources of mutual goodwill and confidence." End of quote. Ours, Excellencies, is not a transactional relationship. Inda, India does not merely return to Africa what was earlier robbed from it. Our approach to partnership with Africa is driven by the aim of empowerment, capacity building, human resource development, access to Indian market, and support for Indian investment in Africa so that the people of Africa have the capacity to make their own free choices and the capability to shoulder the responsibility for their continent's development. Our relationship with Africa is unique and does not need any point of reference. Our partnership is a two-way street. Africa's development in recent years, a result of African vision and leadership, has been impressive. There are many inspiring models and examples of African success stories in sustainable development and empowerment of people, especially the youth and women, that we could do well to emulate. We will always work in accordance with the requirements and priorities of our African friends. The roadmap for the future will reflect our shared vision and goals and our respective strengths and capabilities. These could include areas such as human resource development, institution building, infrastructure, clean energy, agriculture, health, education, and skill development. We will also work together on addressing common issues like climate change, sustainable development of blue economy. India's development partnership is centered on human resource development and establishment of institutions in Africa, which are in turn creating skills and capabilities in Africa, including in areas like agriculture, food processing, textiles, and small industries to expand exports to India and other countries. We will certainly raise our partnership to a much higher level in the years ahead. We will also make our partnership more effective based on a comprehensive review of our development partnership program with Africa, particularly in terms of capacity building, infrastructure support, and technology sharing in discussion with our African partners. We are confident that with its sagacious leadership, abundant natural resources, and its talented youth, Africa is well on its way to realize the vision of Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. And in this journey, 
India will be there as a friend and privileged partner to share our experience and resources to support African nations in whatever manner they want. <laughs> Our partnership can be a source of great strength to each other, both to reinforce and accelerate each other's economic development and to build a more just, inclusive, equitable, and sustainable world. We have complementary resources and markets and the power of our human capital. We also have a shared global vision. As we move forward individually and together to build a better future for our people and societies, we must also reckon with the impediments to development. Foremost among them is the scourge of terrorism, regionally and globally. The spreading tide of extremism and terrorism is a threat we both face. We in India face it from across our borders. Terrorist actions cannot be justified on any grounds. India condemns terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and is of the view that international and cross-border terrorism should be dealt in a comprehensive manner. We feel that with a view to strengthening international normative regime on terrorism, an early adoption of the Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism is essential. Honorable members, as the world becomes more globalized and interconnected, the salience of global cross-cutting issues is rising. These issues cannot be resolved by a handful of powerful, powerful countries or even through regional efforts. They include issues such as climate change, but also global public health challenges, drug trafficking, trafficking of humans, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and international terrorism. There are newer domains of cyber security and space security. We welcome the adoption of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and are committed to effective implementation of the agreement based on equity and principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. India had launched a major initiative of International Solar Alliance to bring together on a single platform countries of the world blessed with abundant solar power. We are thankful to the Republic of Mali for joining the International Solar Alliance. Active participation of large and populous countries like India and those in Africa becomes indispensable in resolving such global issues. That is why India advocates reforms in global political, economic, and security institutions. They must become more democratic inclusive and representative of our world. Unfortunately, few institutions have that character today. Many do not give voice to Africa or to the world's largest democracy, constituting one-sixth of humanity. Honorable members, as our two countries that have demonstrated our commitment to democratic values, India and Mali share unique bonds of trust and mutual understanding. Our shared values and synergies have translated into long-standing friendship and fruitful cooperation. 
As a friend and partner, we are aware of the recent challenges faced by the government and people of Mali. We have been a strong votary for restoration of constitutional order in the Republic of Mali and preservation of its territorial integrity. We are happy that democracy has been restored and the democratic institutions are being strengthened. We welcome the signing of the agreement for peace and reconciliation and hope that it would lead to unity, preservation of territorial integrity, lasting peace, development, and prosperity. My government appreciates the wisdom of Malian leadership that facilitated the signing of the agreement. In India, we believe that political issues should be resolved through ballot and not bullet. We encourage, we encourage all stakeholders to eschew violence and to embrace peaceful and democratic means to resolve political issues. I would like to assure this August House that my government firmly supports the unity and territorial integrity <laughs> of the Republic of Mali and is committed to supporting Mali in its reconstruction and development efforts under democratic governance. We see ourselves as a partner in Mali's reconstruction, economic development, and growth. The Government of India has extended seven lines of credit worth US dollars 353 million to Mali. A large project for US dollars 150 million for power transmission connecting Bamako and Sikasso via Boguni is being finalized. We are ready to deepen our development partnership with Mali and will continue to extend all possible assistance in human resource development and capacity building to Mali. In the discussions that I had with his Excellency, the Prime Minister, yesterday, some new initiatives have been highlighted. <laughs> Our economic and trade relations are expanding, with bilateral trade having tripled in the last five years. However, trade and investment levels are still below the immense potential that exists. We are confident that continued stability and peace would encourage Indian companies to look at Mali as an attractive investment destination for mutual benefit of people of our two countries. We are thankful to Mali for its support to India's proposal for commemoration of an International Day of Yoga in the <coughs> United Nations. We thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Mali, for his support to the yoga events here. We look forward to enhancing our cooperation and exchange in the cultural and educational sectors with Mali. We are deeply pained when some extremist elements tried to desecrate and destroy the cultural treasures in the famed an historic city of Timbuktu. <laughs> the Government of India strongly condemns the destruction of heritage sites and places of immense cultural value to entire humankind by extremists and is ready to support Mali's efforts to revive and restore the rich glory of Timbuktu.
I understand that a Mali-India parliamentary friendship group led by the Honorable Nafa Simpara has been formed. We on our part are keen to enhance parliamentary cooperation between our two countries. I take this opportunity, Mr. President, to convey to you and to the members of the National Assembly of the Republic of Mali my good wishes for your continued success and for the progress and prosperity to the friendly people of Mali. Long live Mali-India friendship. Thank you, Mr. President.